Hi, Fab Critic here, and it's time to talk about the lyrics that no one else is paying attention to but me, apparently. This one is for the boys with the booming system, top town AC with the cooling system. When so you're dedicating this to guys who have good speakers and AC systems in their cars. You realize that's like most cars, right? Yeah, this one is for the boys with wiper fluid and working brake lights in their cars! Then again, she does mention that the cars have their tops down, so that's a little bit more specific, but now that I think about it... Top -town AC with the system. Why would he have the cars top down if the AC is on? I mean, she's not just bragging that his car has an AC system. No, she's bringing up that his car's cooling system is on, in addition to the fact that the top is down. I guess this is supposed to be one of those little brag lines about doing something that's unnecessary just because you're rich, like... And rockin yellow diamonds, so many rocks up in my watch, I can't tell what the time is. <laughs> that expensive addition to your watch ruins the point of having a watch in the first place. <laughs> but what is Nikki ultimately bragging about here with needlessly turning the AC on when the top is already down? Oh yeah, he's got so much money, he doesn't mind going to his mechanic slightly sooner than one would typically need to. Yeah, it's not really that compelling. Excuse me, what's your name? So this song, Excuse Me Miss, is supposed to be a fancy, upper-class, champagne-sipping, hoity-toity, dignified sex anthem. And I know this because all throughout the song, Jay-Z keeps reminding me that I should be thinking that. This is for the grown and sexy. This for the grown and sexy. Only for the grown and sexy. And reminding me that this song is so sexy and dignified, you can't even do anything like a poor person when it's playing. You can't roll a to this one. You gotta, you gotta roll. You gotta light it. You gotta puff a on this one. Try some red wine, little gosh, and nine seven. I got my gosh, and nine seven on. Right. Funny thing is, Pharrell is doing such a great job of crooning his heart out on the song that I would be more inclined to think it was a super sexy club anthem if it weren't for Jay Z desperately trying to get me to think so. You gotta throw in your fine linens for this one. You can't even drink Cristal on this one. You gotta drink Cristal. Dude, stop. Y you don't have to do this. You don't see legends of R&B doing stuff like this. This is sex music. This is classic sexy sex music. God damn it! You you're supposed to have sex to this. It's it's so classy. You're gonna you're just gonna start. But this is the most confusing lyric of all. After he says all this stuff about being distinguished and high class, he says this. You might gotta go get you some Scooby Doo's. What? Got throw in the Scooby Doo's. What the hell are Scooby Doo's? Those are shoes, by the way. No, they're not. Unless you're referring to the ones that parents get for their six-year-olds at Payless. And the thing is, he repeats that sentiment like three times, so you can't ignore it. Got throw in Scooby Doo's. Stop trying to act like you're hip to some high-class fashion thing that we don't know about. Because I'm pretty sure Alexander Wang or McQueen or Da Vinci or whoever the f isn't naming their shoes after Hanna-Barbera cartoons. I tried looking this up, and the only thing I could find was an Urban Dictionary definition saying a clean pair of shoes that you keep looking fresh. What? The okay, that's bullshit. I've never heard anyone say that. Also, this song came out months before this definition was written, so I'm taking that with a grain of salt anyway. Or maybe he was just trying to make Scooby-Doo's a thing. Like, he thought he was such a trailblazer, he could just say anything and it would catch on. But look man, you can't spend a whole song trying to convince us that this is some illustrious sampling of beauty and elegance and then throw Scooby-Doo shoes at us. I don't know about you, but I don't associate black tie affairs with talking dogs from low-budget, irritatingly mediocre cartoon shows. Oh, uh, so I'm getting back into the Beastie Boys, right? And their music is just as rowdy and raucous and awesome as it's always been. Just three Jewish guys who don't give a damn. See, that's what I'm talking about. Got two chicks in bed and they're twins. Double your pleasure, double your fun, am I right? Oh, oh, hey, oh, that's, that's not okay. Also, I'm pretty sure when a father sees his twin daughters having sex with a guy, I don't think envy is the emotion he's feeling. And if it is, that's... Kinda messed up in and of itself. Just checking out on my favorite daughters. Ah! Charlene! Marlene! But I wanted to have sex with- oh! But uh, anyway, back to less criminal aspirations. He wants to rock out just like legendary musicians. The girl is out like underage. Uh, oh. So, so when so when you said you wanted to be like Jimmy Page, his, his, his skills on the guitar were, were the side note to why you wanted to be like him. And you instead wish to emulate his penchant for kidnapping underage girls. Okay, I think we're done here. Wait, one more thing. I just wanted everyone to know this. The original title of the Beastie Boys debut album, License to Ill, was supposed to be, and I'm not kidding here, Don't Be a F***. Yeah, we were one dissenting voice in Def Jam Studios away from celebrating the 30th anniversary of one of the first classic rock rap hybrid albums entitled 
don't be a fat. And I know we like to think of artists as untouchable gods who should not be interrupted or led astray from their original visions, but as a good example of what my show is basically about, sometimes we just need to tell our favorite entertainers, that was stupid, erase it and write something else.